Welcome to part four of my Sun Temple sound design series uh, where I'm adding sounds and music to this environment, the Sun Temple, uh, which is a free asset on the Unity Asset Store uh, by Sandro T. Um, today I'm going to add reverb to all of the indoor areas. So you, there are these um, buildings dotted throughout the scene and a lot of them you can go inside. And I'm going to add specific reverb to these indoor areas to make them sound a little bit more realistic. And there are a few different ways to do that, so in this video I'll be I'll be showing the difference between them, the, the benefits of using one method over another, and how I'm going to approach adding reverb to this project specifically. Before I get to that though, if you've been waiting for this video, I'm really very sorry for how long it's taken for me to do. I quit my job last year to write music for games full time, and while that's been great, and I'm very lucky, What's happened is, the last year at least, I've just been really very busy. Uh, so I'm sorry, I promise to be better at getting videos like this one out much more often, and I'll try to make more as well, so please leave a comment if there's something you want to see in the future, and I promise I'll do it quicker this time, probably. Anyway, so what are we going to do in this video? Well, if you've been following the series, then you'll know that I've been adding sounds to the environment, uh, so far I've added footstep sounds, and some ambient effects to this scene. So outside there are wind sounds, there's, there's fire sound effects, and there's, there's some crickets as well. Uh, I've also added snapshots that are triggered to change the balance of audio when you go in and out of the buildings. Uh, and what I want to do now is to also add reverb to uh, add some realism to those indoor areas. I'm just going to use this indoor state uh, to add some reverb to it. So what are the different methods for adding reverb in Unity? Uh, well, one option is to use reverb zones, which are game object components that apply reverb to an area around an object. So there'll be a spherical area around this object that will apply reverb uh, with a smooth roll off as well. So if I just change this to something ridiculous. Let's go with psychotic because why not? And I place the reverb zone on that plant pot and as I get, as I get closer to it, you can hear reverb effect if I pick a... I can't imagine there's a more obvious preset than that. Let's try... Yeah. And if I move away from it, it smoothly goes away. Uh, there's just one problem with this though, there are a lot of buildings in this scene, as you can see, and quite a lot of these you can go inside of, and largely they'd be using the same reverb settings, so it'd be quite wasteful to use reverb zones on all of those, set them all up, and all have the same settings, and also the, the shape of the zone itself, uh, this sphere, it doesn't really match the buildings, uh, so I'd be, I'd be having to add these together to try and fill out the zone and it just it just wouldn't be the most efficient solution for inside the buildings so we're not going to use that so I'm going to take that off so what other options are available to us well there are reverb filters now reverb filters add reverb to individual game objects which would affect the audio sources on those objects so for example so I pick something with an audio source. I know this fire has one, so this has an audio source. And I could add a reverb filter. Let's do drugged again, because that sounded interesting. And all of the audio that's heard, uh, that's emitted from that audio source will then be applied by that filter. And it's not just audio sources that can be affected by this. Uh, instead of applying uh, the reverb filter to an object with audio sources on, you can, for example, select the camera, which has got my audio listener on, apply a reverb filter to the camera, and then that will affect all of the audio that's processed by that listener, which is everything 
in this in this particular project. Now you can bypass individual audio sources from being affected by the audio listener filter, but only if you're not using those audio sources with a mixer, uh, which we are doing here. So this is grayed out um, because I'm, I'm routing the audio through to the fires outside mixer. So if I get rid of that, I can now bypass listener effects, or I do have the option of uh, bypassing effects if the filter was on this object. The next option that's available is adding an effect directly to the audio mixer. So I could, for example, add a reverb effect to the master mixer. I'm just going to mess around with some of these settings. Lots of reverb. This will sound strange. So instead of adding reverb to the scene, I'm adding reverb to the mixer itself. And there's just one minor inconvenience when using mixer reverb, and that's that you don't get any presets like you do with using a audio, uh, sorry, a reverb zone or a reverb filter. You get lots of lovely presets to play around with. On this, you just get the settings, which, to be honest, are rather unintuitive to use out of the box. Luckily, there's an easy way around that, which I'll get to later. And this is how we're going to use uh, reverb in this in this project because I've already got mixes set up in this project. It makes the most sense to use reverb effects on my mixes. So we'll get to that in a moment. There is one other method of adding reverb in Unity, and that's to use a spatial audio plugin. Uh, spatial audio generally includes technologies like ambisonics, room reflections, and head-related transfer functions. It's often used in VR but it can be used in other games as well and it can be a very good way to create very realistic uh, room reflections and reverb uh, if the project calls for that level of realism and there are a number of plugins for doing that and while I won't be using it in this project if you're interested in finding out more I've published a case study of a project I recently worked on that uses Google Resonance and I'll add a link in the description below uh, about how I did that before I add any reverb to the mixer, I'm going to need to decide what it's going to sound like. So before I do anything else, I'm just going to throw some reverb on the listener and play with the presets to see what sounds right. I've already got a re audio reverb filter on there. I'm going to turn it off for now. And I'm going to make my way to one of the indoor areas. So the type of reverb I'm looking for from this is most of the indoor areas are kind of small um, and have hard walls and floors so there'd be a lot of um, audio reflections around the room it would sound a little bit echoey unlike outside where typically with very very small sounds sort of close sounds sounds like these footsteps these quiet footsteps you wouldn't really expect to create any reverb at all in an area as big as this. And while there are some considerations to make, for example, alleyways, these these large buildings bouncing audio off of each other, because the sounds that I'm making walking around outside are so quiet, really the most realistic thing is at the moment is going to be to not put anything on there at all. Indoors, however, I do want something to change this these dry footstep sounds into something a bit more realistic. Close the door. So, let's play with some presets. So we'll start with room, seems a reasonable place to start. So you might be able to hear some processing on there. Um, worth mentioning, if you can't hear the effect and you're not sure if it's doing anything at all, change from room to the user preset It'll keep those settings, and then you can turn down the dry level. The dry level is the original audio, so that will leave only the reverb. So now I can hear the effect. It's just to make sure it's doing something at all. So I like this, but I don't think it's doing enough. So let's try something else. Let's try hallway. Thank you. 
and I like that, but I don't think it sounds realistic. Even in these larger areas, it doesn't sound quite right. So, thinking about the amount of walls and the amount of reflections that are going on, I think something smaller with um, less dampening might work better. So I'm going to try bathroom. And you can hear now already it sounds more realistic, so it's it's more like a space like this. And a lot of the other rooms are similar in shape and size, so this should work for most of them. Although what I'd really like to do is change some of these settings. So it does sound realistic, but it's still a bit much, it's a bit bright. So I'm going to change from bathroom to the user setting, so it'll keep all of those settings except now that I can play with them and I'm going to turn down the room HF which is the high frequencies I'm going to turn that down to minus 5000 and I'm going to change the decay time because it was a bit long to one and what this should do is it should make it a little less bright a little shorter and it should sound a bit more realistic Yeah, so I'm happy with that. And just to make sure it's actually doing something at all. So it's quite subtle. But I think that's about right. So now that I know what type of reverb I want, I just need to quit out of play and remember those settings because we were doing all of that in play mode. So I'm going to go straight to the user. No, I'm not. I'm going to go to bathroom bathroom first then I'm going to go to the user setting and then I'm going to change room HF to minus 5000 and decay time to 1 and I'm just going to leave that like that I'm going to turn the filter off but I'm not going to remove it because I need to refer to these settings when I add them to the mixer effect so I've picked my reverb so now it's time for me to put it onto the mixer uh, and I'm going to add it as a send effect uh, in case I want to use different amounts of reverb for different audio groups. Then I can just send whatever audio I want from whatever group to the reverb whenever I want to. First, I'm going to create a reverb group on the main audio mixer. So I'm just going to add a new group and call it reverb. Then I'm going to add a receive effect on that group and then a reverb effect. And now I need to copy my settings across. So I'm going to lock the inspector, add another inspector, and select the camera. That's not a great place, there we go. And here are my settings. So I'm just gonna copy these to the audio mixer effect. So first I want to turn the dry level down because I only want the processed signal to go through this group. I don't want any of the original signal. Then I'm going to copy these settings across. So room minus 1000. Room HF we set to minus 5000. K time we set to 1. To K HF ratio is 0.54. Reflections is reflections level which is minus 370. Uh, reflect delay, reflection delay, zero. Then reverb is reverb level. So we want that 1030. Reverb delay, 0 0.011. Diffusion, 100. Density, 60. HF reference, 5000. LF reference, 250. And room LF, at zero. So those are now the same. And because I'm working with multiple snapshots here, even though these effects aren't going to be used on the outside snapshot, I don't want them changing between the two. So I'm just going to copy that effect setting, those effect settings to all snapshots. Now I can remove this filter. 
remove that inspector and unlock the inspector. And then I'm going to select the player audio, which is where the footsteps are coming from, and add a send effect. And I'm going to select the reverb receive that we already set up. Then uh, making sure that the inside snapshot is selected, I'm going to turn the send level up to zero. And on the outside snapshot, the default, it's already minus 80, so when we're outside, we won't be sending any signal to that effect. And that's it. So I'm going to save that, and now I'm going to test it. So now as I'm walking around outside, you can see that the player audio isn't being sent to that reverb bus. But once I go into a building, it is. You can hear nice, slightly echoey footsteps. So why do it this way? Separating the reverb from the player audio group means that I can reuse the same reverb effect for other audio groups that haven't been added yet, uh, like door sound effects, for example. While adding the reverb to the same mixture as the building and outside snapshots will make it easier for me to add new reverb settings for other areas later on. Such as the Sun Temple itself, which is a much bigger room and will need very different reverb settings than I've used here. So, while there are simpler methods than this for adding reverb, and while it may suit a different project to do things in a different way, taking a little extra time to set it up like this will make it much easier for me to work with later on. In the next video, I'll be turning my attention to the Sun Temple itself, adding special sound effects, some ambience, and music that triggers as you enter the building. In the meantime though, if you like this video, then like this video, leave a comment, or click to subscribe if you want to hear when the next part in the series comes out. I promise it won't be as long as uh, last time.